Right, good morning everyone. Welcome to this week's video. We're back out in the woods today. We're in the birch forest today and we're specifically going to be giving these bad boys a hug today because we're going to be looking at all the different things that you can use birch for. <laughs> I've just discovered on this birch here. So this, this is a birch burl this is. So this is just where you get this this ball of growth come out of the side of a tree and as, as the tree's growing it's sort of bubbling up inside and creates these massive great burls inside of it and it's an absolute fantastic wood for carving and uh, you'll see a lot of sort of like uh, Sami knives and the Sami cooksers and things like this made out of birch burls. So we're surrounded in the marsh here today by silver birch and as you can see it grows really really straight so as a building material it's an absolute fantastic choice of wood. And then there's what grows on the birch as well. I mean look here we've got about 10 horsehoof fungus growing on this birch here. So horsehoof fungus is an absolute fantastic fungus but it needs to be processed correctly to be one of the best tinders that is ever been created through the existence of man. So the trick is when picking horsehoof fungus they need to be fairly fresh. The more hard they are the more older they are and the more difficult it is to process them. But this one that we've got here this is pretty good this is so we're going to actually harvest this one take this home let it dry out and process this at a later date. I'll stick a link to a video up the top there of a video we made about this time last year I think on when we processed this to make some amadou. So just remember that horsehoof fungus grows on dead or dying birch so you're not going to damage the tree by pulling these off but they can be very very tricky to do so just be careful. So the main thing you're going to need is a decent knife and you're going to want to just come down from the top and just start to peel the fungus off. So another fungus that grows on birch is the birch polypore like this one here and this is an absolute fantastic example of, uh, of a birch polypore. So the birch polypore has got a lot of medicinal properties to it so we're going to harvest this and take a look at what you can do with this one. So you can see from here that the buds are starting to appear, they're still a little bit early to be harvested but what you can do with the buds of the birch is you can harvest a load of buds, you can crush them up to make a little poultice to make a really really good topical antiseptic cream. Now the one thing that this is showing me today with the buds appearing on these little branches here is that the trees are ready to be tapped. So let's take a look at tapping some birch. So I've read on a lot of forums about people tapping birch and there's always a lot of people that say there's no need for it and you're damaging the trees but people have been tapping birch and maple trees for absolute thousands of years and as long as it's done properly it's a really really beneficial liquid that you can have. So we're going to tap a birch today using a very very simple method and brew up what I like to call a forest coffee. So the first thing you want to think about when looking for a tree to harvest the sap from is you need a tree that's about as thick as what a football is. Look for a tree that's got a slight lean to it, it just makes it easier when you're actually harvesting the sap. And then we want to be looking about a metre up on the tree where we're going to start drilling. So the gear that I use to tap birch is I've got a 10mm wood bit and it's got a bolt just uh, welded on the end and it's just got a bit of thread rod onto that there. So what you're looking at doing is you're looking at getting about four or five centimeters into the tree. Now you can use a knife to do this, I've used the small little wood carving knife to do this but you can damage the blade on the knife and the last thing you want is to snap off a blade inside of a live tree. So all we're going to do is just push into the tree, start this off, 
So that's pretty much ready to start harvesting the sap. So all I've got here is just a piece of plastic tube. You can buy stainless steel versions of these that are specifically made for, for maple tapping, but they do cost a bit of money to bring from overseas. So all I use for this is just a piece of plastic tube and then a piece of cord just to hold my tin around the tree so we can trap all of the sap. And then once the tube's on, all I've got here is just a little tap here. So this whole kit, this is off a bit of a home brewing kit. So I'm just gonna push that into the plastic pipe, turn that off and uh, leave that as it is until we're ready to get the kettle on to start harvesting some of this sap. Right, so there we go. It is as easy as that. This is gonna take a bit of a while this is to fill up because we're still quite early on in the spring. You, we're still at the beginning of March and you sort of want mid-March to end of March really for the sap to, to really, really be moving up the tree. Anyway, while this is filling up, let's take a look at the birch polypore and see what we can use that for. So using this as a wound dressing, it's got loads and loads of different ways that you can use this um, and we'll take a look at a few of those. The reason that it's really, really good for dressing wounds is it's got a load of medicinal properties to it. Um, it staunches blood, it's antiseptic, it's anti-inflammatory on, on a small skin wound. So let's just take a look at how we can use this to, uh, to dress a wound. So all we're gonna do to make this into a dressing is we're just gonna move the bottom section of the polypore. So there we go, so that's the piece that we've cut out. It is a little bit thick in places, but it can be squashed down and then it can be literally just applied like a plaster and if it's fresh it will actually stick together so this little piece that we've cut out here it's it's really soft it's really really porous um, you can literally just place it over a wound and then you can bandage around it um, and it's going to staunch the bleeding it's anti-inflammatory it's antiseptic so another really really good little freebie that grows for free out in the woods so looking at the other fungi that grow on the birch We've got these horseshoe fungus that we picked earlier. Um, these are solid, these are rock solid, these things. Um, when they're fresh, they're a lot easier to cut. If you let these dry out, then they are really, really difficult. Sometimes you've got to use a saw blade. So looking at the outside of these, if you see here, I've taken the top part off with a knife here. Um, so that's the part of the amadou that you need to, to pull out of this fungi to, to process it. If you look at the bottom of the fungus here, you can just see that sort of tiny sort of leathery uh, mark around the outside. So that's the part that you're gonna be harvesting from, uh, from the horse hoof fungus, none of the bits in the middle. And it is really, really difficult too. So if you're gonna have a go at doing this, I say there's a video on the channel there of when I've processed it before, so have a look at that. But it is really, really difficult. And please be very, very careful when you're trying to, to get, get to the amadou inside of these. Right, so a bit of a tedious task, but we've managed to get some of the amadou out of the horsehoo fungus. This piece here, you can still see, it's got a few bits of gills that we need to trim off there. Um, but this is fairly ready to, to process to make some amadou. And then thinking about it, one of the other ingredients that is used to process the amadou, uh, to make the lye especially, is birch bark ash, which is uh, quite a heavily alkali, um, which helps break this down and makes this an absolute fantastic uh, tinder to catch in ember. Right, let's take a look to see whether we've got some birch sap ready and let's get a forest coffee on the go. So what we've got there, so, so we basically, we're just heating up our birch sap there. So all I'm gonna do with this while this is heating is I'm just gonna brew some pine needles, which we picked on the way. So we're just gonna bring that to the boil and then we'll add the coffee later, but we'll just get the other bits out of a bag. So we need our cookser. Definitely need a bag of elk jerky while we're having a brew. And I've got my coffee pouch here as well. So, coffee connoisseurs, talking about coffee. You should never boil coffee. So all I'm gonna do here is bring the pine needles and the birch sap up to the boil. I'm gonna just let this off coffee goes in just gonna swill it around for a bit and then I'm just gonna leave it for about 30 40 seconds something like that just to let the coffee settle I don't mind all the bits of coffee in the in my coffee at all but yeah really looking forward to this beautiful day to be sitting here and enjoying a really nice forest coffee one thing I haven't mentioned is you can make a, a syrup out of birch sap but um, it's about a 60 to 1 uh, of what you need, so 60 gallons to, to one gallon of, uh, of syrup you'll get out of it. It is an absolute ball lake to make. 
um, but it is a really really tasty syrup but it's something that I wouldn't be bothered to do so a couple of other things while we're talking about sap so this has been about 40 minutes and we've pretty much got a full bottle out of the tree there so birch sap is known as a spring tonic so it would be drank this time of the year really to flush out the winter um, so it's known you know in the old wives tale of flushing out the winter and the reason it flushes out the winter is because the saps are diuretic so it's going to be absolutely brilliant at flushing the old toxins out of the old system as well now the sap itself can also be used for minor skin complaints so just poured onto the skin and rubbed into the skin it's absolutely brilliant for things like psoriasis and, and, and eczema because it's carrying the anti-inflammatory properties down onto the skin as well So there we go. That's my recipe for forest coffee. Cheers. Mm. I can't recommend this jerky enough. So this is by a company in Sweden called Renier and you don't get any more organic than the meats that they use in this. I mean, this is wild game that they're using in this. So this one here, this is elk or moose. Uh, they produce uh, reindeer jerky and red deer jerky. And yeah, you don't get any more organic and any more tasty than this. If you're in the UK and you fancy getting hold of some of this, sorry. If you're in the UK and you fancy getting hold of some of this, I'll stick a link to uh, uh, one of the suppliers in the UK, Scandi Kitchen, uh, in the description below. But yeah, definitely recommend this up. Right, so that basically wraps it up this week. So thanks for coming down into the woods and taking a look at the birch with us today. If you've got to follow any of these things that I'm doing here, especially if you're picking fungi, please be 100% sure that you know what you're picking, especially if you're eating them as well. If you're tapping the trees, please make sure that you re-peg the trees properly so they don't bleed out afterwards. So thanks for watching this week's video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button just below there. And uh, as always, there's a couple of videos for you to take a look at, and we'll see you next week on the next one.